someone's health situation sometimes it takes saying it in several different ways just like if you're teaching children you know sometimes you have to say it three different ways three different times for them to even kind of cue in a little bit you know so keep that in mind but um she also said she was wondering if I prepare such a wide variety of of meals you know due to my channel because she said she's usually eating the same things over and over and you're exactly right Karen I show a lot of different things you know I, I could eat the same four soups all the time the same like corn crackers I make chia crackers the same smoothies the same I'm always switching up my greens and switching up my veggies but Yes, I try to show people a large variety because some people like more sweet, some people like more spicy, some people like more elaborate, some people like more simple, you know, so it is my job here to show a wide variety of things, but, you know, on the opposite pole of that, I'm always showing things that, that are in a narrow scope of a certain variety of greens, fruits, and veggies because, and fats, because that's what I can afford. You rarely see me using very extravagant ingredients or a whole lot of different things because I like to keep it in my budget because after all if I'm blowing it out of the water on my budget what's that gonna do to yours and maybe somebody said to me the other day you know everybody's not on an extreme budget like you Tanya everybody's not and that is true so I try to remember that but a lot of people are and even if you're blowing a lot of money wouldn't it be better not to have to spend so money and much money and be just as satisfied wouldn't that be great you know I was telling that to my daughter the other day and we we're always going over again and again how for her to make you know vegan meals more raw every day over there in her price range which is half of what I even spend and it can be done lots of crock pot meals um, lots of incorporating different um, she can eat grains and also all those things and lots of veggies you know lots of a wide variety of fruits but we're always talking about that but it's always in that same scope of things she's using how to twist that twist and turn it to make it into a lot of different flavorful recipes you see what I'm saying on the cheap and on the easy is, is my it, that's my bottom line the cheap and the easy you know so um, and I pretty much like easy cleanup too so you're right, Karen. Um, what else? So we have her down. Okay, let's see what else we got. Um, we have Caroline underscore strawberry. S T O B R I N G. Um, I can't read my own writing. So hey, hey, friend. So she was saying, um, how much nuts and seeds to eat every day? How much do I eat every day? And is food combining important? It's important to me. I, I heard um, 
a YouTuber not too long ago, a couple months back, saying they thought it was irrelevant food combining, but to me it isn't. But these are also people that have not had health issues, they've not had digestive problems and all this, and I have. So I think it depends on your own body, and everyone's different, you know. I think a, a high raw plant-based diet, high in nutrients is the way to go for everybody, but it, it can be tweaked to your own personal existence. So I do think food combining is important for a lot of people. Um, nuts and seeds. You know, nuts and seeds I include in my fat for the day. So, and, and typically I'm having a small amount of chia seeds through the day. Occasionally I will have ground fried flax seeds instead, but usually chia because I really like how they help along my digestion, okay? And they really coat the intestinal lining and they're very calming. They're high in omega-3. Um, really good for brain balance and I really like that I like to be on top of my game you know so but other than that you know I'd like to keep my fats low during the day and then at night I'm probably going to just have one type of fat so if I'm going to have nuts or seeds I'm going to have soaked those prior I really do like raw hulled hemp seed hearts which do not have to be soaked they are a raw fat but they've had the outer shell taken off the hull so to speak so um, if you're a person who doesn't digest nuts and all that well, consider soaking them because most nuts, make sure to try to get them raw, have a, an enzyme inhibitor, which means it's, it's kind of so they don't um, sprout and grow it until it's time, you know what I mean? So you want to soak that so that that falls to the side so that you can digest those more easily. But the thing is, if I was going to do nuts or seeds, I would soak those ahead, and then I would be mindful of how much I'm eating. So I like to have my, my fat between like 9 and 11% every day, I've noticed. Um, if I have more fat than that, I tend to find myself being more lethargic, and, and I like to be zippy, you know, I got stuff to do. So, um, high energy. So what I'm going to say to you is depending on how much calories you're, you're getting during the day, I'm not going to sit here and say, you need X amount of calories because I don't know who you are. I don't know how big you are, what your metabolism is, what, you know, what kind of harms, what kind of, um, what's been done to your body, basically, what your body constitution is right now, what kind of medications you're on, all these different things. Um, you may even have like a high cortisol level because you're kicking up a lot of stress in your life and all these things. But anyway, um, being mindful of that, you know, until you're used to knowing about how much fat you need, plug in your things to chronometer. I don't really do that anymore because I find it tedious and basically I know how much I'm eating, you know. I generally myself get about a 2,000 calorie diet a day. So at night, after I've had my chances during the day, I'm probably going to look to get about 160 to 180 calories from fat every night. Well, you're looking at about three tablespoons of raw hulled hemp seed hearts, for example. Let's use those as an example, okay? So you're probably thinking, well, that's no fat. What the heck am I going to do with that? Or half of, an, of a small avocado, for example. Well, you can blend that into a soup, a sauce, a dressing, and you can have three quarters of a Vitamix full of very satiating, savory, fatty tasting dressing for very little fat calories, stretching out your fat. So I have a video on that called Stretching Out the Fat. Um, type in fat on my search bar and it will show you about being mindful about how much fat you're eating. I find this one reason that people are gaining on a raw vegan diet or not losing or not feeling their best, okay? Furthermore, having blood sugar problems because when the fat level in your body is high, it, almost picture yourself like this little ball and the fat, like you would think of the fat coating a, a drain or something, it kind of coats the cells and it keeps the sugar from like your fruit smoothies and different things or say you had a few dates from actually going in and out of your cells like it's supposed to working like it's supposed to, but instead it's sort of bouncing around in your your blood, you know what I mean? So that's not what we want, so I want to keep the fat low. I also usually, like I said, just want to have one type of fat because I find combining fats to be very hard to digest, so back to that food combining situation. Um, what else? Let's see, so that's on that. Um, okay, Amy, okay, A-M-Y, R B C A. Hey friend, she said, does my or he or she say, does my weight fluctuate? 
you know, a couple of years ago, I beat my scale to death, and you can, um, I'll try to link that video below, because I beat the scale with an axe, and it was quite humorous, but I was basically saying, take back control, you know, quit letting the scale control you, but control what you do every day, control your patterns, control your rituals and your routines, therefore the results fall into place effortlessly you know without you being a slave to that number furthermore as you get more body, more muscle mass on your body you know your weight you, you could weigh 130 before you had weighed 125 four years ago but yet you were skinny fat then and now, now you're toned lean you know what I mean there's a big difference in that so weight is semi irrelevant to me within a, a certain range you know but my, my weight mindful of how my clothes fit and I will only notice that my weight or my body tends to fluctuate um, a few days ago I thought God um, these pants seem a tad smaller well then the next day I started my monthly cycle so but what is funny about that is I used to have such bloating and such extreme pain from my period every month that I would have to dip out of my job for three or four days because I couldn't even get up and down the hall without like bleeding through two pair of pants. Isn't that absurd? But now I don't even have those problems. So, um, so basically my weight really doesn't fluctuate, you know, but when you're holding, the, you know, you could be holding a pound of blood in, in you know, um, inside girls, you know what I'm saying? So, um, so basically, no, it doesn't. And it's freeing, I'll tell you that. It is freeing just to know that I eat like I do. I, I was just in the um, the Dollar Tree picking up something for my mom, and as I was waiting in line, I was just looking at those candies sitting there. It was like Snickers and Reese's Cup and all those things. And I was just thinking how, what would possess me to pick up one of those? What would possess me to eat that? Nothing. Nothing is gonna pull me off my, my A game. Do you know what I mean? I don't need a backup plan. I don't need a, well, it'll start again tomorrow plan, start next week. No, no, I've already started and I'm on the high road and nothing's going to drop me down, you know. My backup plan is like what I do every day or like having my stash of frozen bananas or, you know, frozen avocados or different things like that. Um, it's basically my backup plan if I run out of money or I don't want to pay some astronomical price they want to charge for something because then I just won't buy that. I'll buy something else because there's another fruit or veggie I could get instead, you know. So anyway, um, that's probably enough of that. Let's see. Do we have time for one more? Somebody asked me how much dehydrated foods I eat. Um, and Brooke... Um, Brooke A. Call, I think. Hey, friend. Um, you know, I'm mindful about how much dehydrated food I eat. If I dehydrate food, I really like to make it with no fat so I don't have to incorporate that or think of that with my fat for the day. But I also eat a large raw meal with that, okay? Lots of greens, lots of veggies, water-rich veggies like um, tomatoes, peppers, all the cucumbers, all these different things. Maybe cucumber noodles with that and drink a lot of water too. So it's just providing the crunch and a little more um, more hearty existence. That way I can still feel good. I clearly do not live off dehydrated food, even in the winter. So I don't even eat that every day. I, I put them in the Debbie Meyer green boxes so that I can stretch those out through the week. If I make like three or four trays of corn chips or um, like my raw wraps, I, I made a tomato carrot raw wrap. I'll try to link it below. I always say that and then I don't do it, but you can find it on my search bar or on my dehydrated foods playlist. See, that's a thing I did. Okay, so on that playlist are a lot of dehydrated foods and you can have those, store those. If, if I make like three or four trays, I, I could go a week and a half snacking on those with my dinner. You see what I mean? So anyway, see y'all later, alligators.